Hi there, my name is Will. Welcome to this video. In this particular video, what I want to do is to sort of soft reboot a series I started named Managing Automation. Now, in this series, we're going to be looking in particular at email automation, how to automate the process of sending emails, sending an email, sending multiple emails in such a way that um, the system needs minimal input from you as a developer or any other user using the application. I'm going to be using csharp.net, uh, WPF as the front end framework. And without much further ado, let's get straight into this particular course. Just going to adjust my microphone slightly. And I think that's a little bit better. So let's get straight into this video. So first things first, um, if you are a beginner, feel free to follow along with this tutorial. It is going to be more on the intermediate side of things. So um, a few intermediate concepts are going to are going to be utilized, uh, as you'll see, such as interfaces at a very rudimentary level in as, in and of itself. But um, uh, still feel free to watch this if the topic interests you. But yeah, this will be a more intermediate level uh, tutorial. So let's just get straight into things. So first things first, we're going to be using uh, the main namespace that we're going to be utilizing is this Microsoft Office um, Intro Outlook. And this namespace will allow us to interrupt with Outlook services. And it's going to be kind of the backbone of the application that we're going to be making. this. So I'm going to take a sort of a live format approach. I'm going to be coding as I go and explaining step by step what's actually going on, what's happening, um, breaking things down as I see fit. So let's start from the top. So I, I like to start with the main window. I already have a user interface fleshed out actually and um, hopefully it won't be too laggy because my instance of Visual Studio runs a little slow on my laptop but as you can see the designer is loading and I might just pause the video just so it can come back on time okay so the designer has loaded and as you should hopefully be able to see it's kind of hard to spot but this is a login button up here uh, on this very simple user interface see if I can zoom in and the idea is um, of course this is a very basic um, user interface just to kind of demonstrate the ideas as they work you have a email domain field and you have a password box um, and the thing is after you um, log in via your email or rather you opt to log in by writing your email domain and your password you then click login and once that login button is clicked in the main uh, in the main class there's the events the, for the login, uh, login button click event, and it just calls a function which I named generate mail. Now, with generate mail, what it does, it's, a, it's creating some kind of credentials class, and it's assigning the value of the text box and the password to the credentials. And the way I opted to do this is that I created an interface called iCredentials. And of course, you don't have to do it this way. And uh, I'm not really using interfaces to their full potential, but I just kind of like the idea of encapsulating certain functionalities and exposing them as and when needed, which helps in terms of security, especially since we're dealing with more sensitive style of data, potentially, you know, an email address, password, you want to consider encapsulating your data. Um, so what I did, I've created an interface and it's called iCredentials and you can see there are a couple fields email domain and password and respective email domain and password properties and then what i did i created a credentials class comparative a comparative credentials class and it just and oh, i'm not too sure why that's happening there i'm just gonna have a look okay see if i can get rid of that error here we go Get rid of this. And let's just deal with these errors. The name email domain does not exist. So what I'll just do, I'll have a reference. That should hopefully go away. Yeah, so what I've opted to do, sorry about that, is um, that I have implementation of my interface. Um, in particular, I have, and f my understanding is somewhat limited. I'm still sort of uh, exploring the use cases um, of interfaces. It's quite a compelling um, subject. And I even have, I'll leave a link to some um, 
materials in the description of the video, um, such as this article on MSDN, a Microsoft Developer Network website, on interfaces and how they can be used, um, explicit interface member, member in implement in implementation, a <laughs> little bit of a mouthful. <laughs> so I have my member implementation over here of my property. And I'm just going to go ahead and just define the scope. There we go. Just to get rid of those errors. I'll do the same here. I credentials, email password. I'll do the same here. Credentials, email password. There we go. That's all sorted. So I have my member implementations. And so when I go back to my main class, I can then create an instance of well, what I did on in global scope. I have a, a definition, a declaration rather of I credentials, and named it credentials. I wanted, I was tempted to leave a comment there, but I'll leave it for now. I'll refrain. And uh, credentials here, I've created a new instance of this um, of this interface, and I have gone ahead and assigned the values of email domain and email password to the values of the text box and the password box respectively on the user form. Simple enough. Now what I'm going to quickly do, what I did rather is to separate the main bulk of the, um, of the email processing in a separate class called email processor and um, what I'm going to do is to run through how this works and then we're going to reference the functionality in the main window. So the main window is going to hopefully be as lean as possible with the majority of the functionality in respective classes. So I went ahead and I made this email processor class. Again, you want to make sure you're referencing this Microsoft Office Intro Outlook namespace because it's going to be quite important. And um, we have here a few properties. So a property to store the inbound mail, email subject, and the email body. I just left them as public properties for speed, um, just for the sake of time. And you want to declare this Microsoft Office Intro Outlook namespace class. I went ahead and set it to null. And you want to do uh, another namespace class. This one is static, and it's called Outlook namespace equals null. We're going to be touching upon how these make sense as we go, go ahead. So don't worry if it kind of doesn't make sense right now. And just a flag to indicate whether the synchronization of the inbox has succeeded or not. And then we have a constructor for the class. So um, I went ahead and just made a functionality to set the uh, sync boolean flag to false. And then I have here a class, I'm sorry, a method called read mail items. I'm just going to go to my notes so I know where I am. <coughs> read mail items here we go and it has a return type of outlook emails which is simply just a class i made which holds three different um members inbound email the inbound email property an email subject and email body again the structure of this func of this whole program isn't like one-to-one -one efficient right now i have taken a few liberties just for the sake of time so right now, these are just public properties um, so that we can get the picture. Inbound email, email subject, and email body. So these ones are quite important in terms of the email that we are going to receive in our inbox. So I'm going to go to email processor. And what I did is I defined and set an Outlook application class to null. So as you can see here. And I also have some target email folders. So Mappy folder. And I think Mappy is a... Um, is an email protocol. Don't really know the ins and outs of Mappy itself. Uh, if I can, I will leave a link in the description to some further reading. And so I'm targeting two particular folders. Uh, I considered targeting the inbox folder and the spam folder. The reason I did this is because my spam folder is like what, maybe like 10, 10, 10 items of emails, 10 emails in my spam folder collectively, maybe like 16, I don't know, but my inbox is large because I don't really open mail that often as I should. So uh, it takes a long while for the program to load all the mail in the inbox. So I thought I'll just include the spam folder because it's quite small and it will take a, a lot less time to load in the program. So uh, here I created a um, items class, which is from the Microsoft Office Intro Outlook namespace. 
you want to go ahead and create an items class i called it mail items set it to no and then i have a list of outlook emails uh, called list email details and i i reckon where i'm going with this because i'm following my notes is that um this is going to end up being the return value of this particular class so um list email details I, I create a new instance of a list of outlook emails and if you remember outlook email simply has the three members inbound email email subject email body we want, we want to um populate these uh, we want to assign these uh, members with values i'm just gonna go back And we have here Outlook emails, um, a declaration. And that's where I got up to when I scaffolded the kind of skeleton code here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just bounce off from here. Email process. I'm just looking at my notes really quickly so that I can catch up with what I'm doing. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to have a try catch block. So that we can catch any potential unhandled exceptions we can basically handle the exceptions that we may come across when we try to synchronize and what we're going to do in our try catch block what you want to do is say outlook application which i believe is a local variable yep yeah, of type application from the outlook namespace we want to instantiate it so new microsoft let's see if it comes up for me no Microsoft Office um, interrupt Outlook application. Okay, so we're going to instantiate that member and then Outlook namespace, which I think was a global. Is that a global? Yeah, it's a field level um, variable. We're going to instantiate it, so it's going to be Outlook application. What we just created above and we're going to call a method called get namespace and we're going to pass a semantic um we're going to say mappy uh, which is our email protocol we're following i believe if i'm not mistaken and then we're going to do another try catch so we're going to nest a try catch here ah let me just make sure i do this nesting right so try da, 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 da. yeah it's fine so, so just gonna make sure. I'll, I'd rather I just made sure the nesting was okay. So I'm um, going back to my notes, so I know where I was. So we, uh, yes, that's what we were. So we made another try. I'm gonna just scaffold the catch. And finally, hmm, make sure that's right. Yeah, that looks fine to me. So now we're going to say here, sync object, which is an interface from the off from the, I'm just going to say Outlook namespace, which is what we're using the Microsoft interrupt, Microsoft Office interrupt Outlook namespace. So we're going to create um, an instance of this interface and we're going to just set it to null. And, um, Yes, and then from there, we're going to say sync, obj sync object, basically, that we just created is assigned Outlook namespace. We'll find it. Outlook namespace dot sync objects. See that? And then we're going to look for application folders. So app folders. And then we're going to uh, sync and we're going to basically, ooh, let me just have a look at this. I think I spelled it wrong. Ah, yeah, there's a little typo there. And I'm going to say underscore sync object dot sync and it should be sync and somewhere, which is an event. We're going to create the event. So sync objects underscore sync and and then we're going to say outlook namespace dot send and receive we should spell that right 
receive and we're going to pass true that and then what you want to do syncing which i'm just going to double check which is at field level so that's what we made globally syncing is then going to be set to true so this is the, the um the part of the program which is synchronizing with the inbox uh if i'm not mistaken <clears throat> and then um we're going to finally um say sync object and we're going to call the start method so we're going to start synchronizing and that should take care of that first tribe that this try block in particular and in case of anything if anything goes wrong during synchronization maybe there was a network error or something we're going to just say message box i'm going to keep it simple Let's see if i can call the message box what's the namespace for the message box i can't remember anymore uh it's probably one of the ones that you get usually so let me just double check on the main window so forms you know what let me just grab all of these because i cannot really remember <laughs> i think the message box is in one of these i'll place this here where was i so try catch message box here we go dot show we can just put an error message for now um sync Let's just say inbox synchronization failed, right? Something like that. Please check network connection or login credentials. And then finally, what we want to do is just simply set our syncing flag to false because in this case uh, uh, we are s basically we could be resetting the flag to false in this case just looking at my notes okay so now what we're going to do <coughs> excuse me we have another block here. So the initial try catch here for the um, assigning of the Outlook application. Uh, let me just have a look at my notes where that is nested. Okay. Well, I scroll down, try, try. So many try catches. So I think we want to go here. Yeah, so we're still in this initial track block, so it's just good not to get too confused. So uh, what we do, so this now this is the part of the nesting whereby um, the synchronization is successful. We're going to say Outlook namespace send and receive, and we're going to pass true. And now what we want to do, we want to target the um, the folders. Let's put a comment here. Allows for sending and receiving of emails. Then we want to retrieve. Don't know if I spell that right. If I spell that right, I'm not really not sure. Specified folders. Right, so now what we want to do. Inbox folder is equal to Outlook namespace. Get default folder should be here. We're gonna search the enumerated list for OL, as in Outlook default folders, um, and then we're gonna access the members within this enumerated list, and we want the inbox folder. So we want ol folder inbox 
and then also it was my spam box right that I wanted to refer to so we're gonna assign its value to Outlook namespace get default folder oops Outlook and default folders and we're gonna say Outlook folders junk for the spam slash junk um, junk folder slash spam folder so we want to get the respective folder basically so I'm gonna go ahead and just um, reference the enum oops <laughs> here we go right sweet so I'm gonna reference my notes again assign the focus mailbox so what folder do we want to show by default i suppose we want to also always show the main in, in, inbox folder so the focused mail inbox whatever it's called but because of the fact that my inbox which i'll demonstrate or have already demonstrated in the jump cut at the beginning has a lot of items i want to just refer to the spam box because there's not a lot in there so assign the focused mail box so depending what you want, I'm going to say mail items in this case. Oops. Mail items is assigned. I'm, I'm going to go for the spam folder. And then I'm going to access items. So as you see, it's quite an involved process in, in this particular case of developing, <coughs> excuse me, an application for automating emails right now we're on the stage of just literally retrieving the emails itself let alone automating um different emails to send this is uh, more receiving um inbound emails so in this particular part of the video but every step we're going to take things step by step so as to not overwhelm so so i saw so that i don't overwhelm um people who are following along with the video um because this sort of process is very involved and the namespace is very robust. There's a lot you can do with it. It's quite exciting. So now that we've done all of this, the next thing to do is to actually monitor, to monitor the inbox itself. We have accessed the emails. So let's just su summarize things. Uh, we've established a connection to the server. Um, and now what we've done here is to attempt to synchronize with our inbox and once we've um, synchronized with our inbox, what we do is to then retrieve the um, the target uh, mailbox. In this case, I'm targeting the spam folder because um, it's there's not a lot of items in my spam folder, so it shouldn't take as lot as much time to load as my main inbox. And then, so now what we want to do is actually populate um, some kind of monitor. Um, it would be in the UI somewhere, so we can actually view our mailbox. So what I'm going to do, leave a comment. I'm going to leave a comment saying populate the inbox monitoring UI. Say something like that. And this could probably be done in a variety of ways. I'm going to opt for a for each loop. Let's wait for Visual Studio to catch up here. Excellent. Excuse me for that. Uh, what's this? Okay, for each, so for each Microsoft interrupt Outlook, and I'm gonna target the mail item. That's a bit strange. Oops. Microsoft Office interrupt Outlook mail item, and I'm gonna call it item. I'm gonna do this type cast in mail items and mail items is simply this local variable here of type excuse me of type items so it's if i were to inspect this element items the class thereof it's probably some kind of um collection from what i'm guessing and because it probably supports the i enumerable type which is why i can use it in a for each context I'm not going to inspect it just now because of time. Let me just see, where did I... That's a local definition. Let me just quickly look at that. 
yeah, okay, I'm not gonna go into the <laughs> looking into that, but it's just interesting to note there. Anyway, where was I? So email details, which I think was in um, field level. Oops, just wait for Visual Studio there. Email details. Now just check this. Yeah, local. Oh, it's a local variable. Okay, it's assigned new Outlook emails. Which is a class. Ah, yes. Yeah, so it's the definition. It's the declaration I made of the Outlook emails class I created. Email details dot inbound mail. So that's one of the fields. If you remember, if I go to Outlook emails, inbound mail, email subject, and email body. So I'll go back to the email processor. I'm gonna say uh, inbound email is assigned item dot sender email address so the um, the user who has sent us or not really the user but any person that has sent us an email we are so I guess inbound email is not the best way to describe it I should call it inbound email address but um, for now I'm not going to change it so send the email address so we know who's sending the emails to us email details email subject Probably see where this is going. Item dot subject. So email details dot email body. The signed item and then body. So we're gonna go ahead and select this one. And then we're gonna say list. Oh gosh, goodness me. Email details, which is a local variable, which is the list of email details. Because, um, I mean, this I can already kind of um, scaffold in my mind a more robust way of doing this. But the way I opted for is that I have um, different instances of this Outlook emails class stored in the list, so that for every um, for every piece of mail. There is going to be a, a target. Uh, there's going to be a sorry. There's going to be a sender, a subject, and a body for every mail that would compose comprise a mail item basically. So we're keeping that in the list, and then we're going to just uh, whoops, just wait for Visual Studio there. We're going to add our email details to the list. Just as so, like that. And then the one thing we have to do is to release certain resources. So we're going to say release com object. If I can find it. Uh, okay, so basically this is a function that, I'm, that I've written somewhere. I'm going to find it. I see it here. Okay, because I've already sort of... Um, I don't want to confuse the, the process right now. So what I'm going to do... Because what I'm about to show you guys is a little bit boilerplate -y. I'm just going to copy and paste it from my notes. So this release com object is another function which you're going to need. So place it anywhere in this particular email processor class if you're following along. Uh, read, read mail items, email processor. So I want it like here. So I have here private static void release com object and it accepts as a parameter Microsoft Office Intro Outlet application and uh, also an uh, items overload namespace mappy folder mail item okay let's go through that one more time so we're going to need a, a function called release com object which we make you can name it what you need but I've named it release com object so that's kind of self documenting and you're going to need to pass as an overload an application um, items namespace mappy folder mail item all of these overloads are in the Microsoft Office intro outlook namespace okay and then um, this is where it gets a little boilerplate. So if application object, which I believe is one of the overloads, is not equal to null, and then we just release the comp, we release our resources, i.e. the release com object call from system runtime interrupt services dot marshall, and we do that for all of our overloads, as you can see. So I don't want to go too much into that. It's quite repetitive. 
release com object we just basically pass the necessary overloads so outlook application mail items outlook namespace inbox folder and the last one will be no is that semicolon there yeah and then I want to return list email details so there was another return I had here I'm gonna just get rid of that because it's not the best place to put that So here's my try. Make sure I'm following through here correctly. Try. And then after this, I can return here. But instead of now, it will be list of email details. So list email details. It's the list of Outlook emails that we have we are populating. Because we do have to release our com objects every time we are looping through the full each. And then we have the catch, and then we have the finally, which is releasing all the com objects. Um, make sure that's correct. And then we obviously then return, satisfy the return type. And that brings us to the end of this functionality for retrieving our, meet, our email items. Okay, so uh, I wanna do a little test to kind of make sure we're on the right track here. Uh, this so yeah so so I'm just reading to myself just making sure there's nothing I've missed out on my notes. So what I'm gonna do is fire up the application, and hopefully we should get something that kind of or through debugging, I'm gonna try and expose what's going on because right now um, I'm not actually. Um, I know I have a bit that says populate the inbox monitoring UI. That's kind of incorrect commenting. What I'm doing is populating, oops, populating, uh, no, that's not the right way to say it. Populate a collection to hold the email items. But then we have to deal with the UI itself. So the best way would probably be to be uh, in somewhere in the main class. Just go over my notes as well to have a section. Um, well, first we have to actually reference, we have to construct email processor, right? <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and do that. And then we have to monitor what's going on. So I think a good way to go about this after our credentials have been logged in back in the main class, what we wanna do I'm going to say var mails is assigned um, email processor. And I'm going to say read mail items. <coughs> like so. That's the function we just created. And um, I'm just going to have a look. We could deal with the GUI now. Why not? I don't see why. We what we're going to do is I'm going to just copy and paste some fields that we're going to need in the main window. And I'll just really gloss over what they do very quickly. Very quickly gloss over this because there's quite a few things. And they range from functionality to like um, animating the user interface. So the only ones we have to really be... Uh, wary of is this inbox so determine a reference I know I use that word uh, create a reference to the class that reads the inbox so basically I have a, a reference to the Outlook emails class uh, I also have a list of string inbox subject list inbox body list inbox buttons so this is to do with the UI contact item which is an interface of Microsoft Office into Outlook contact item this dispatcher timer is for the animating of the UI. Um, this is also for the UI. Uh, inbox header, text box, up margin, UI stuff, animation. Tick index for the dispatcher timer. So I'm just going through these just so we can know what's going on. Uh, you don't need all of this. Um, private compose email is not necessary right now because I haven't created that class. So I'm gonna just comment that out. 
so yeah once again what you really need is um this just a reference to the outlook emails so we're gonna go here i'm gonna go back down and we're gonna deal with um the um displaying for the gui i told you this would be quite a live run through um in terms of its format <laughs> so uh it's kind of the easiest way for me to edit these kind of tutorials as well let's see where was i inbox so yes here we are so i'm gonna say int index is assigned to zero and we're going to use this index in a for each context Update the global reference to the mailbox. Wait for vision. I'm just waiting for vision to, to catch up with me. Just gonna just take a minute there. Here we go. To the mailbox. Where am I? And then this inbox equals to mails. And then I'll have a comment. Initialize the inbox lists. This inbox this is one of the fields that, that I copied in from my notes. Okay, so I have a so this is basically dealing with the UI. So I have a list of buttons, and this list of buttons will be populated on the screen um, as um, as all the um, inbox items are being populated or generated or retrieved. So I'm gonna say inbox buttons. So you want to go ahead and make sure you have a it depends how you do it you don't need to basically do what i'm about to show you here and in fact i'm not going to go through the whole process i'm going to just expose what's happening via debugging but i'm just going to quickly for the sake of time i think it'd be quicker if i just copy this in for my notes so i have a list of buttons for the ui subject list i have a list of string is a reference and a reference to the body it seems i would have omitted the address um of the users sending me the emails and uh, which is fine for now and i'm not really going to go through too much of this outside of debugging so i'm just going to check my notes because a lot of stuff to do with the ui that's actually a whole video i'll make a separate video probably how you can approach this so for now the main thing is that we are constructing email processor so i'm going to go ahead and just put a break not even there i'm going to take that out i'm going to put a break at the end of our main general email um uh what's the name of this function where we retrieve the email contents right at the end just as we're returning and then that way we can expose what's going on so i'm kind of happy with where we are so far hopefully there's no versioning issues i am getting two warnings one warning in regards to the versioning of dotnet i'm using hopefully that won't be an issue and i'm going to go ahead and prep debug i'm going to run the program with debugging hi guys so i'm back and the program is booting up as i speak right now and it is actually here so what i'm going to do I'm going to minimize my Visual Studio session. I think I've left a break. So what happened during the, before the jump cut and now, um, I realized that I was using this, the wrong um, .NET version for the Outlook interop um, namespace. I need to target a, so basically I was using the .NET WPF application template and I need to use the .NET framework application template in order to for the compatibility to be guaranteed for the um, Outlook interrupt. So what I had to do is just uh, make another project, pour over the code, the code base, and then um, 
basically just rerun the application. So that's what I've done. Uh, make sure you're running this. If you're following through with this tutorial, that it is a .NET Framework WPF application, not a .NET application, because the Outlook interrupt namespace um, is not compatible with .NET Core, as far as I'm aware. It's compatible with versions of the .NET Framework. I think I'm on version 4.6.1. Left a break here at the end of my... Um, uh what's the name read mail items function in the email processor so what's going to happen is that once the emails have been retrieved in the synchronization i'm just going to minimize this once there's synchronization then um we should see in debug view some of the email um email items so what i'm going to do i'm going to log in i might as well do it off screen not that it makes a difference i do have a password box but i think it'd just be a little bit better application is just like frozen ah here we go i've hit my break so i can go ahead and observe what's going on so what i'm going to do is i'm going to we have a count of 20 in our list of email details i'm going to ex expand on this so we have 20 different um objects here in this particular list so i'm going to go ahead and just open one of them so i do appreciate it might be a little bit hard to read but um uh, over here the index at 16 we have an email body and an email subject and the body so the content of the if i just collapse this as i sh as i showed you before 20 of these index at 0 up to 19 0 index at 20 items and we have simply retrieved my junk my, i think it's my junk mail i'm not sure if it's my junk mail or if it's my main inbox because i definitely have more than 20 in my main inbox but that is definitely um because I think it's returning, it might be returning the junk mail folder first because it's at the, like the, it, first it's returning the inbox and then the junk mail, I'm not too sure, but anyway, uh, that's not too important. What's important is that we are getting, we are, we have achieved my inbox, my mailbox. And uh, so that's gonna bring us to the end of this particular section of the course. So in this video, I showed you how to access your uh, mailbox via an, an email domain that has to be an outlook email domain and you log in uh, via the ui and as i showed you um, by using the uh, microsoft office interrupt outlook namespace we're able to access the emails so in this overall course we're looking we have a view and that view is automation how to create campaigns where we can automate the sending of emails and there are, there are many use cases of this kind of system you might be perhaps a social media marketer and you don't have the time to manually send out emails well uh, with this approach you don't have to do that so you may want to scale your business or even i don't know perhaps uh, just use it uh, as an opportunity um you know for enterprise so you want to learn the skill sets right so this is the way you do it so thanks for watching this section of the video in the next video we're going to be looking a little bit um, about the ui how to actually um, flesh out a ui that will display these the contents of the inbox the target mailboxes and then we're gonna from there go on to how to automate email uh, probably before that we'll go uh, we'll hit the subject of composing emails so actually sending emails from the c-sharp application and then from there step by step we are going to then look at automating a campaign of emails using a scheduling system so i hope you've enjoyed this video please do give it a like and a thumbs up a like which is a thumbs up, I believe. Yes, uh, if you're viewing this on YouTube, uh, subscribe for more content on Williams C-Sharp walkthroughs if you're watching this on YouTube and I bid you a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.